All right, uh, we have Emily here, and she has multi-directional in instability, um, scapula dyskinesis, a competitive swimmer. Right shoulder is uh, more symptomatic than the left. She's comp continued to swim uh, freestyle and back uh, backstroke, backstroke, and uh, she's tried some various therapy programs in the past. And you know, when you see a, a, a swimmer that has multi-directional instability you have to look at the lower extremity and specifically looking at the hip relation to the shoulder. The hips and the shoulder are connected. And if you see stiffness on one side, mainly let's say in the sagittal plane of hip, lack of hip extension, you're gonna have excessive rotation. If you lack extension, you're gonna have more stress on the shoulder. If you have greater rotation, you're, you're not as strong with your rotation on the left side, you're gonna to have to use that shoulder more in rotation to make up the difference. The other thing you're gonna see in the clinical exam is a couple of tests. So stand on up and face Julie, and stand on your left leg, and go through those little I's, Y's, and T's. So I's, Y's, and T's are typically done on a physio ball. I like to put the patient in a standing position and she shows more femoral internal rotation on that left side. Now go to the right side. On the right side, she shows more femoral adduction when in comparison. It's, it's slight, but when you look at this a lot, you can see that her angle goes down a little bit more than that femur tends to rotate. Now let's go on your belly, face up that way. So here's your prone leg length. So then you say, and you make a prediction. Look at the heel height difference here, okay? She is off by a good quarter to a half inch uh, with this on that side, right? Now, what, look, at the inch, look at the rotation difference, okay? So when you look at that, you look at that when you lose motion. So here over here on this side here, right? This is going to be your stiffness. On, in your psoas muscle with that high heel. And you go on that side and you look at the difference in the internal rotation, okay? So stiffer over here, greater over here. So if she's loose, if she has less, less hip extension there than there, okay? Less hip extension here, you're gonna stress the shoulder. Less rotation, rotation, stressing that into forward elevation. Now, the way we take care of this problem here is we do a thoracolumbar junction manipulation. The reason why you would go right at the thoracolumbar junction is the psoas attaches there, the quadratus lumborum attaches there, the latissimus attaches there, these are all major muscles in swimming, and the trapezius attaches, everything attaches here. And the psoas from this side here being the higher heel, which is the tighter psoas on there, greater rotation. We want to get these leg lengths level with today's treatment. So we're going to do that and then we'll play another video. When you, when you got it. Got it. Ready? Okay, so thoracolumbar junction and make a loose hand right over the TL junction. Got to drop her back, drop her back. Crunch right there again. And another one. Now, let's go back on your stomach. Head that way. Julie, if we can look at these leg lengths again. Remember, this heel height was right, was what? Right was high, and now we have what? Equal legs, okay? Now, let's see what it did to the hip extension over here. Remember where it was before? Here, that's without stretching the psoas. Just by releasing the attachment, the proximal attachment, you also see an effect with rotation. So now we tend to get that equal rotation. Now her home program, go up on your hands and knees, Emily. So now she's in the classic bird dog position, right? Raise this leg, raise this arm. This is the most butchered exercise in the history of rehabilitation because nobody looks at what happens to the lordosis. The lordosis is supposed to only go from L5 to L1. This is going up to T10. So that means she's using her extrinsic muscles and she's not using her multifidus. 
she also shows when she does this pelvic drop. So that shows as she goes up, if this side drops, that multifidus is, 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 is weak due to the tightness of the psoas, okay? This shoulder, right, is starting to show greater scapular winging. These are all the things you want to look at. This is more than just testing somebody's manual muscle test or having somebody stand on one leg. You got to look at them in the positions that they function. So we got a lot, this is very fixed, you can fix this problem with identifying the, the, the impairments that the patient has. So as we got to teach her how to get herself into L1, L5, maintain the neutral, and then where she fails is where you start. We've already done that earlier today that she started to show greater winging at repetition number four over here and number seven over here. That's where she starts. So short-term goal would be she's able to get eight reps quadruped on one side and let's say she's able to get eight over here and 14 over here, double that, right? That shows core control if she doesn't pelvic drop. So you gotta look at this connection from hips to shoulders from there. So that is gonna be her program. It's gonna be more than just rubber bands and more than just laying over a physio ball. We gotta treat her, t teach and train her in weight bearing, which is, pr which is proximal over distal motor control, both in the standing position as well as the quadruped position. So Emily, this is going to take about six good weeks, and this is a good time of year for her to do it. And we'll check it. We'll check in with you as we go through the program.